This is the MMA Diagnosis Podcast. And... Oh, fuck! <laughs> it was at this moment that he knew. He fucked up. We need, we need something better. We need what? someone professional to do this. Yeah, where are you going, mine? <laughs> this is the moment you've all been waiting for. MMA Diagnosis with Hamad and Nadim Mir. It's time! Okay, guys, we are back for episode 10 of MMA Diagnosis. Episode 9. Episode 9 of MMA Diagnosis. Uh, We are uh, are covering Belto 214, uh, Fedor uh, uh, Emelianenko versus Ryan Bader. So uh, let's let's start. Post fight. This is a post fight, yeah. We didn't do a pre- pre- uh, preview, but okay. Um, let's start off with the first fight of the main card. So, uh, do you want to uh, do you want to cover the prelim fight that you? Want okay, to cover? yeah. So the prelim fight was the one that I wanted to cover was AJ Agazam versus Jesse Roberts. So AJ Agazam has a very high level BJJ background. He was a, yeah. uh, I think he was a Nogi World Champion in IBJF. So he was also has a wrestling background for o- Ohio State, and he's quite a trash talker in the BJJ circuit. So it was quite a big debut, but he lost. He lost by a split decision, I think. So uh, the issue was, uh, you know, his stand up. Uh, he had decent stand up. Like he didn't look bad for a jiu-jitsu guy, but uh, he's got a lot to work on. Uh, his punching was a bit, you know, you know when he would punch. He wouldn't put weight on his punches, so he wouldn't sit down on his punches, essentially. So, you know, when you punch, you sit down to put uh, power and impact. So he wasn't really uh, doing that. And then um, the guy he was fighting, Jesse Roberts, I think he only had one pro... Uh, I think it was his pro debut, or one. Uh, he only had one pro fight. So he had a decent amateur background. But uh, Jesse Roberts just stuffed his takedowns. You know, the problem with a lot of jiu-jitsu guys... I feel is if they don't have a judo wrestling background, the takedowns are very weak and it doesn't work well in MMA then because you can't go to your strength. So I think um, he struggled in that area. I think uh, I think he, I don't think he works on his wrestling as much anymore, AJ Agazon, because he couldn't get him down. Uh, you would think with an Ohio State wrestling background that he'd be able to get him down fairly easily. But I think over the years doing so much jiu-jitsu, you kind of neglect your wrestling and then it gets weak. It gets weaker essentially that area. So yeah, he lost by split decision. He got out punched and then um, close fight. But yeah, that was actually the big prelim fight. Okay, so let's move on to the main card. We've um, so the first fight of the main card is Adel Al Tamimi, is it versus yeah. Brandon McMahon? So McMahon. Brandon Mc- McMahon, same thing. Yeah, Brandon McMahon versus Adel Al Tamimi. So what what was your thoughts on that fight? Adel Al Tamimi. Well, uh, he was very good on the ground. So he went for the standing guillotine and then he switched that to a commu- when um, he went for a Kamura grip when um, Brendan went to take him down. So I think uh, he did very well, to be honest. Uh, his skill, um, I was looking at his record. It says seven and five. So I thought he wasn't going to be that good. But well, so well. What was uh, Brendan... McMahon's record? Five and six. Oh, well, you know. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so, yeah, he looked good. Um, from what I remember from the fight, I don't, I don't think I watched this fight. I think I watched more of the highlights. Um, He got him, he essentially, they stood up, he got him down, took him down, and then got him in the armbar, was it? Oh, uh, yeah. yeah, armbar, he got him in the armbar, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, it's up, uh, he's um he's got a pretty good, uh, he looked like he had a good jiu-jitsu. Was it, uh, is he a brown belt in jiu-jitsu, is it? Or black belt? I don't know, I can't. Uh, but I think he, I think they said he was a brown, but, but yeah, Jiu Jitsu looked uh, pretty good. He looked, uh, but I don't know, we have to see in a uh, good debut. And uh, we'll have to see, I don't know, was he a war veteran, army veteran? I don't have a clue. I, I have a feeling he was an army veteran, but maybe I'm just uh, talking, maybe I'm thinking about somebody else. But yeah, that was a pretty good um, uh, fight. Is that his debut, Belto debut? I think so, yeah, he was. Yeah, I think that was a pretty good fight. Um, he had Chris Pratt yeah, in his well. corner. Was he in his corner yeah. or his band? Like, uh, I don't know. Is Chris Pratt's friend? Is he? Could be. Training partner. Yeah. Might be a training partner. They might train at the same gym. So he probably came out to support him. Well, Chris Pratt's a full-time MMA fighter. <laughs> 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 he might transition out to MMA as well. We might see Chris Pratt in Belto UFC soon. 
I think oh, they did say Chris Bar had good, uh, decent wrestling. Yeah, when he was young, uh, he was uh, a high school wrestling background. Yeah. Uh, who was it that was talking about Chris Pratt in training? It was it Michael Bisping or someone? Uh, I can't remember. Somebody was talking about Chris Pratt, like he's got good wrestling. Decent. It was in Noguera. He was doing some. Uh, I'm sure Chris Pratt was talking about it. He was doing a bit of wrestling with Noguera. Mm. Just like you know, uh, you know, just moving around and stuff. But yeah, anyway, he looked like good friends. They're good friends or something, or training partners or whatever. Because he was in his. Yeah. When at the end, you know, when they do the interviews, Chris Pat was with him. So, uh, shall we go into the next fight, the bantamweight? Uh, yes. Juan Archuleta versus Ricky Bandejas. Yeah, was his bantamweight for the bit? No, bantamweight, one thirty-five. Okay. So, um, Ricky beat obviously James Gallagher, Gallagher in his yeah. last fight. Was he knocked uh, him out? Yeah. Yeah, he knocked him out, right? Uh, TJ. I remember. I see TJ Dilcho in Juan's corner. Yeah, they train the same camp. The yeah, train, and main love. Training partners. So no, uh, and the training love. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, uh Frank Frank Trigg was the referee. Couldn't believe it. Uh, no, yeah. I've never seen him. Oh, you haven't seen him? He, he's yeah. refed by a few fights. Yeah. He refs a few fights. It's it's good to see a fire in the as yeah. a ref because they know what's going on. They understand everything. So Frank Trigg was actually very high level. Do you remember he fought he fought Matt Hughes? Yeah. I think well, we started well, watching. Well, yeah, I think when we started watching it, he was more on the tail end of his career, right? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. He, I remember he lost to Koscheck and a few other people. But, uh, yeah, Twinkle... It was it Twinkle Toes, wasn't it? Something like that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was good seeing him. And then uh, this fight, so what I saw was the more experienced guy kind of pulling Ricky Bader. But Ricky Bader did come back. He came back. Yeah, in the third late... round. Third round. Yeah, third round. But it looked like Juan Arteleta used his wrestling and his experience, caught him with a few good shots, used his wrestling and his jiu-jitsu skills, caught him around, and Ricky Benes was mainly fighting off back. And yeah. I think the the reach gave um, Juan Arteleta, uh, Arteleta a bit of a trouble. The reach, you know, Ricky yeah. Benes' reach, he gave him a bit of trouble. So you know, the you know the thing with uh, Juan Arteleta, he was a three division champion in ROC Ring of Combat. I think he was three division champion. Oh. So he was champion for I think bantamweight, featherweight, and lightweight. But um, since he will, it shows that like maybe he can't. I don't think he'll be able to do that in Bellator because he's going to be a bit too small maybe in the higher weight classes if he's struggling with Ricky Bedeas. But he looked good. He looked really good. He's on a very long winning streak. I think he's twenty three and one or twenty three and two. Is he was twenty one and one record before this. Twenty two and one now. So he's uh, on... his winning streak must have been sixteen and all or something. Yeah, very high winning streak. Yeah, 16 a... fight he was, I think, winning streak. Did, does he want a number one contender or did he want a title shot? I think he was I saying... I can't I, remember. I think he he goes, I want a title shot or um, a number one contender. Archuleta, obviously, I think, personally for me, first two rounds, round one and two, Archuleta won. Even though Banderas was pressuring him in the second round a bit as well, cutting the yeah. angles. The only reason I think he won the second round was due to his wrestling. And clinching, like, yeah. you know, grappling. Yeah. Uh, round three, he tried going for bombs. Do you realize he was always running in and swinging? Yeah. And then in the third round, he got caught with that big knee coming in. He got caught with a big knee. Yeah, he got caught with um, with the knee. But, yeah, it, it just shows that the experience was a bit too much, I think. Uh, Ricky Medeiros, like... He was uh, looking tired. And um, then I think... Yeah. Van Der Hus had a fourth and fifth. He might have taken it. Yeah, because it was the, it was swinging towards him in the later rounds. Yeah. Um, Juan Archuleta, I don't know who's gonna fight next now because uh, was it is a uh, is it bantamweight? Yeah. Are you sure or is it yes. featherweight? I'm very sure. It's bantamweight. Okay, so bantamweight. Who's the current champion? Bantamweight. I can't remember. Isn't it from... one of the Pitbull brothers or that somebody else? No, I'm sure Pitbull was. Um... One forty-five. Yeah. So it's 135, I can't remember. You know. Let me double check. You find out? I'm looking, it's just... Okay. Oh, yeah, I forgot. How could I forget that? Uh, Darren Caldwell. Oh, yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> don't know why, it just... It didn't... Um, I, f- I kept on thinking Caldwell was um, 145, because obviously he's 5 foot 11. But yeah, he's a champion, Darren Caldwell. So do you think he should fight Darren Caldwell next time? Maybe. For the title. Uh, How maybe. many fires does he... Or he could fight Dantos, Eduardo Dantos. 
But I mean, Darian Caldwell is isn't he going to uh, rematch oh, him and uh, Horiguchi? Yeah, so wouldn't that be weird though if Horiguchi wins? See, I would have said he could have fought Michael McDonald, but Michael McDonald's retired now, right? Yeah. So how many people are there really in the division? I don't think. Yeah, I think Michael McDonald's retired. Yeah. So how many people are there actually in this division? Because who is he gonna fight then? Don't know. What's the list of people in the battle? Okay, I'm on I'm on rankingmma.com now. Yeah. So looking at the Belto Bantamweight rankings, I think this is unofficial, right? So okay, these are actually this is a no, uh, this is um, not proper. Uh, there's quite a few guys. I think AJ McKee is in Bantamweight. Isn't he featherweight? I'm sure AJ McKee is featherweight. Yeah, I think so. This is really confusing. Wait. Oh, well, uh, but basically, I think he's got... There's quite a few good fighters. Um, I think he should fight either Edward Don- Eduardo Dantas or just fight for the belt. Darren Corwell, maybe wait it out or get one more fight in if he wants. If he doesn't want to wait. You've got Joe Warren, L.C. Davis. L.C. Davis is... Actually, this is very old. you got Joe... Uh, you got Joe Taimangalo. You could fight him next. He beat Darren Corwell, but he lost his last fight by decision. Uh, there's not a lot of fighters actually. Yeah, I think uh, we yeah, should go on got, to. Miga Henry Corrales. Yeah, but uh, okay. we'll carry on about that later. Okay, Jack. Okay, Jack Swagger, which is oh, WWE Jack name. Yeah, Jack. Hager. Jack Swagger, he's WWE name. Yeah. So, but we all now we know him as Jake Hager, versus J W Kaiser. Uh, like that name, but yeah, he got bad. Um, <laughs> heavyweight. So. Uh, do you notice that? Yeah. Did you notice that when he was coming out? Yeah. He, our truth, was singing his walkout song. Like, was he? Yeah. You didn't watch I didn't, that. I, I didn't watch that. Oh yeah. damn. So our truth. WWE. Yeah. 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 And TNA. Yeah. Our truth. Yeah. I made. He made two albums. What, 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 what was his? Uh, uh, what was his slogan? Our truth. He made two albums. Do you remember his slogan? Our truth. Yeah, I can't remember now. Sucker or something. Was that Bukti? That's Bukti. No, that's Bukti. <laughs> Bukti. So basically, Jake Hager making his pro debut at the age of 36, and he's six foot five. Each two inch reach, right? Yeah, that is yeah, right. that's good. That's good um, stats for heavyweight. Yeah, and uh, Jake Hager ran one. He just got a bit punched, like one punch. He got caught. Was, yeah, he got caught. caught once, and then bit, he just took him down. That's a bit worrying, though, it? Getting caught by J.W. Kaiser. Yeah, who's got one and one record here. Yeah, but I think they're doing it the right way, though, because he shouldn't be fighting a guy that's like 6 and all. No, so, no. He should be fighting... I think his first few fights should be like that. Yeah, because they want to build his confidence and build his experience in the light, like, you know, on big shows. So, yeah. oh, even though he does have that experience, but it's different, you know. He's not very domestic. You're in a different arena now. So, uh, Oklahoma State, right? Wrestler. And Kaiser uh, had him in the, his half guard, but Jake just went for the Kimura and he kept on dropping elbows one after another and he was dealing damage, but then in the end he got the arm triangle after that and uh, Kaiser tapped up. Simple. And we, the people, won. <laughs> I think that's. Remember? Yeah, cr- yeah. He did that, he yeah. said that, you know. I think yeah, he said nah. that after the interview. Uh, yeah, he went, he went, he went nearly full WWE mode. Yeah, I think is, I don't know, man. I find it a bit cringy. Did you see when he goes uh, home stay on here? Was like, no one, no one said nothing. Or was they, do they block that sound up? I don't know. <laughs> they block that sound up. <laughs> but it would have been awkward if he said that. And no one like said nothing. I think he said Oklahoma State stand up. Yeah, it was just it was just crickets and all. It was like no one gave a shit. With it. But maybe yeah. it's because they blocked Sandra. I didn't hear that yeah. part, you know. Maybe he oh, did well. say that. I didn't re- listen to the full interview. Yeah. But we the people won, so. I think he looked he looked good. He looked like, uh, he was, obviously, he's got a very strong wrestling base. So that's a collegiate wrestling background, not pro wrestling background, by the way. So yeah. <laughs> people got to get he won because of his pro wrestling background. Uh, yeah, his um, collegiate background is very good. I think they should just slowly build him up before he fights anybody decent. Yeah, significant. You don't want him to, you know... Get knocked out, yeah. Yeah. Let him develop his stand-up. Who do you think he should fight? 
I don't know, just fight another... Another one one or two and zero or something. Yeah, fight another bomb or Jennyman or... Not bomb, but, you know, fight another... Yeah. Guy that's not very good. <laughs> with a, you know, a guy with a losing record instead of a winning record. Fight. Bill him, he needs about four good fights, five fights before... He Actually, fights anybody significant. Nah, anybody significant. I think he needs a good eight fights, to be honest with you, because you don't want to be fighting yeah. other guys. Yeah, but at the end of the day, he can actually fight on the next card. Like, he's not injured at all. Literally, if he wanted to, he could go on 215 or whatever, 216 and fight again. Yeah, I think he should. I think he should get as much experience as he can, because he is 36. He's not very... Yeah. He's exactly a young, you know, young guy. So, he needs to quickly build up his uh, skill. So, it's- I, do I mean, you think? Yeah. Do you think he can, if he carries on like this, winning, like uh, people who are journeymen, like he? Do you think he can at least fight four fights this year? Yeah, easily. I think he can easily get four fights in. I don't see. I think he can get five fights if he pushes himself. But um, four fights even, he should try to get in at least four fights. He needs to get as much experience as he can. Like, if he can get even six fights a year, it'd be amazing. But I doubt he's gonna do that. So I think he should try to get at least four fights. Build up and then for next, the next year, no, next two years, build up, yeah, to so try get at least 10 fights before you fight somebody who's in the top 15 of belt or you know, top 20. Build yourself up, I think that's the best way because otherwise, he's gonna rush, he's gonna, you know, what's gonna happen, he's gonna end up if he if they build him up too fast, he's gonna end up getting knocked out and then he might not even come back again, <laughs> like he might get no, told I don't believe that he's a collegiate wrestler in yeah it's not about, give up. it's not about wrestling yeah but you, it doesn't matter if you don't want to give up if you get knocked out cold you get knocked out cold yeah but i'm saying i'm just saying as in like you have that mentality you remember you know i'm saying look look you can have how much heart you want yeah but if you're gonna get clipped and you're gonna get knocked out in heavyweight yeah. you can be as good as you want but um, but that's where his wrestling comes he, in no but his stand-ups are very weak he needs to yeah. you're not understanding what i'm saying he's got to build that up man I'm not saying the heavyweight stand-up, but once he fights a guy who can stuff his takes and they got a really good stand-up, he's going to get knocked out. So they, they can't be putting him with the big shocks after four or five fights. You need to, you know, MMA, it's got an issue where they put young guys against good guys, uh, top experienced guys straight away. Whereas the boxing model is a bit more better. At least, you know, you should give them a bit more fights, build up, get the ring experience or that cage experience and then get the big fights. So yeah. I there was there was actually a, a, a quite a, a interesting you know in the preview with Frank Mia and Josh Thompson yeah they talk before the fight uh, what's the other guy's name uh you know he used to come on Fox he was on Fox yeah uh um I forgot his name now but yeah oh my god I can't remember his name <laughs> what's his name yeah I can't remember now yeah the mustache guy. yeah 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 Paul one I forgot his name uh yeah, uh, yeah so we'll say you wouldn't remember it. <laughs> Jake Glazer. Yeah, 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 yeah. So, you know, when they, they were talking, right, and they're showing cross fighters who, who, you know, transitioned from pro wrestling to MMA and MMA to pro wrestling. Yeah. I think from pro wrestling to MMA, it was Brock Lesnar, obviously. Was Lesnar the first guy? Lesnar was, Bobby right? Bobby Lashley? No, Lesnar was the first guy. Before Bobby Lashley? Yeah. Or Batista? Yeah. Lesnar yeah, turned yeah. it. Wait, on about Lesnar turned yeah. it. No, yeah. I just remember Bob Lashley as well. Obviously. Uh, Bob Lashley came a year or two later, I think. Yeah. You had Bob Lashley, and then you had uh, Batista. Batista. You only had one fight, though. And CM then Punk. you had CM Punk, and then, and then now Jack Hager. And then, you know, the other way, I think it was um, Ken Shamrock, obviously. Remember yeah. Ken Shamrock? Yeah, Ken Shamrock. Yeah. He was the first, right? I can't remember. I don't know about that. One of the first few. Um, you had Ken Shamrock, you had Matthew Riddle. You remember Matt Riddle? Yeah, Matthew Riddle. He's talking about, you know, the yeah. Dana White said he's not going to make it and all that. He's doing well. He's on. Is he on NXT now? I can't remember. He could. Yeah, uh, he could be. I, on, I think I heard he's on NXT now. Could be. So yeah. actually, I think really something. Well. Yeah. Do you know Matthew? I should tell you an interesting fact about Matthew Riddle. There's a picture of him beating John Jones in wrestling in high school. I think. Yeah. In New York State. <laughs> we'll have to check that out then. <laughs> That's actually funny. Anyone just check it out. See if I can find it. Yeah, it's actually an interesting picture. Uh, yeah, he transitioned. There's quite and Ronda Rousey, obviously, she's done really well. Yeah. She's done better than I thought. I didn't, I didn't think she would do well. But yeah, she's done really well transitioning over. Yeah, but oh. remember, they're using her star power as like, you know, not just you. She wasn't obviously just a UFC star. She was a, you know, a mainstream star. Mm. 
So the easily you can easily use that to transition from. Yeah, the, but not a lot. Trying, but processing is a lot harder though. The way she yeah, yeah. she she's like she's doing a guest experience. She's actually a full time on the roster now. Yeah. Essentially, so that that's not easy to do in processing. No, processing is very difficult. So uh, yeah, that was good. Okay, let you want to move on then to the call main event. Yeah, I think this was a great okay. match and so, a great learning experience. Yeah, so we had Henry Corrales versus Aaron Pico. Okay, let me say something interesting. Featherweight, featherweight fight. Featherweight fight, yeah. So let me say something interesting now. There was a, a preview, you know, in the preview, Frank Mia yeah. and Josh Thompson. Josh Thompson. They were talking about it and they were saying that, you know, Aaron Pico, he's yeah. very good at boxing and using his kickboxing. And he's very good at using his wrestling as well. But they go that we haven't seen him be a complete MMA fighter yet. Do you get it? So he's yeah, good at doing that's one. True, that's true, that's true. But we haven't seen him mix it. And they go Henry Corrales. Frank Mio saying Henry Corrales should use his MMA experience. And you know where you uh, transition and everything. Capitalize the fight there. Yeah. And then when you watch the fight now. That happened exactly. So that's describe exactly it. What can you describe so, it? Yeah, so obviously in the beginning of the fight, they're both standing, boxing. Pico yeah. catches him with the uppercut. Oh, yeah, big. Corrales, yeah, right uppercut. Corrales gets dropped. And you see Corrales, like, just moving his head down and getting up and then creating space, right? If yeah. I think if Aaron Pico was more experienced, he would have maybe went for a takedown or mixed it up a bit more or took his time. You see him, they both start getting in the um, one-arm clinch, right? Yeah. One-arm like clinch, a- yeah. Like, you know, single collar, yeah, yeah. single yeah, collar, single right, collar. Yeah. both in a single collar. So, single collar for people that don't know is um, where you use one hand around the head. Yeah, so you know how you have one hand around someone's head and you, you, your arm around their head and you start punching or whatever. That's called a single collar, sorry. So, that grip. Um, he had they had a single collar, they both had it and they were punching each other. Pico went for the body and then tried to go for the head. Uh, you know, I the body shot a, body. Yeah, I want yeah. to ask a question. So, you see, they both had a single collar. And they both had their left arm, right? Like using their left arm yeah. for the single collar. Yeah, yeah. Why do you, did you no, notice no, that? No, 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 no. No, sure. no, no, no. Wait, look, listen. And Aaron Pico changed it. He went from his left arm single collar his right to arm. his right arm. Why yeah. is that? That was, that was, you know, and, that, nah. and that's how he got caught after that. No, no, no. Look, this is, I think he was trying to switch because, yeah. um, you know, I was. He went for the right. They went for the left, right? He went for the left. He had the left yeah. cut pipe first. Yeah. But you know, for he wanted to do body shots, right? Yeah. In that angle, the body shots were as strong. Yeah. I think he wanted to switch and then catch him in the solar plex or yeah. the rib, the liver. Yeah. You know, with the left side, if he holds the right hand and then hits him on with his left hand, he yeah. can catch Henry Corrales' ribs or, you know, yeah. uh, the solar plex or maybe his liver. So I think, but you know what he didn't realize? This is where Frank, what Frank Mee and Josh Thompson said was very true. He was hitting, he did a left body shot, and I think he was going to go for the head. Yeah. But you know, in MMA, that doesn't work as well because it's not boxing gloves. It's not big gloves. So you can't easily defend yourself. So when you see he does a left body shot, he's going to come for the head, right? Henry Corrales moves back, hits the overhand, and then uh, he, he goes to sleep, basically, because he hits him. And you see you see after when he was dropped, while he was dropping, hit two more punches. Yeah, I he saw that. Right. Yeah, so he just shows his inexperience because I think Josh Thompson was saying that... He got caught. Oh, Josh Thompson was saying yeah. that um, Aaron Pico should have went for the takedown. He could have went for the takedown in that situation. He's a better wrestler. Should have used the takedown. But that's where his inexperience came in. Because he's only had four fights. And I think Jake Glazer was saying it's, it, it was a total of like nine minutes and 15 seconds or something. All of his fights together. Yeah. I'll, like, I'll, he hasn't had a lot of ring experience. I'll, I'll give you the record. So before this fight, he's got 4-1. to one, So he's had five fights. Four wins, one loss. And Henry Corrales has 16 wins, 3 losses. So, exactly. so a lot more difference. Nearly yeah. 4 times more experience. Exactly. Yeah, 4. Yeah. Um, it, it just shows you, like, Henry Corrales was more adapted to the MMA style. Like, it just shows you, you can be an amazing boxer. You can be an amazing kickboxer. Look now, Go Kansaki. Look yeah. how amazing he looks in kickboxing. you seen the video on our page, right? Yeah. Where he did the combo. Like, but then he did MMA. Clear round just caught him. Because the gloves yeah. are different. And it's a lot of different fight. It's yeah, Ranchi like, just knocked him out. Yeah, so it just shows you, like, just because you're good at one aspect, it doesn't mean it's going to translate well in MMA. 
it could you know it, you need to be able to transition everything and the master of that is GSP as we know so yeah he's got a lot to learn Aaron Pico is 4-2 and two now so he's got to come back from another loss but, but I, think, I it's, think it's a learning experience yeah and I think he needs to be worried now because he's been uh, he got dropped in his first fight I, we see his chin hold up because uh, I'm a bit worried well, now, he got did he get hit in the chin or the head temple uh, chin. I'm sure he got hit in the chin. I think he yeah, could be right, but uh, he got, if he got hit in the temple, most people he got, got straight. You no, know, he got straight in the jaw. So you get yeah. knocked out. He got caught right over the top. He didn't see it coming. But he didn't see it coming like that as well. You said. Yeah. Yeah. No, but in the more, you know, the best way I heard it was that you know when you get knocked out, yeah. it's like your brain's like a jaw. So you know, like the first time you open a jaw, it's hard, right? Yeah. Each time you start opening, it, it's easier and easier. So each time you get knocked out, it's easier to get knocked out. Your brain just shuts off. It's a mechanism, right? Your brain just shuts the system down. Maybe and, it does. It. So I'm, I'm, a bit, I'm a bit worried that maybe because of his old... Because he, he's got a good uh, amateur boxing experience, right? Aaron yeah. Pico. Maybe he took a lot of shots in amateur. His chin's not the best now. So there's a lot of like... Henry Clark has got power though as well. So we'll see. I think Aaron Pico should take it slow now. I think they should let him build up. And uh, Plus it's a factor like you mentioned. He didn't see the punch as well. That's another factor. And, and they were transitioning, yeah. transitioning, you know, the MMA, actual yeah. MMA. Yeah, he's uh, who do you think Henry Corrales? Henry Corrales wants the title shot next, right? Yeah, he said that he wants to face Pachiki. Uh, how, how do you see that one going? And he yeah. didn't mention that when he first what? fought Pachiki, was on, was it a week or 12 days' notice or something? 12 days' notice, yeah. yeah. It's a long time to prepare for a fight. So, um, I think in Corrales, that case, he should get a title shot. He's training he only at, had 12 days notice. He's training at MMA Lab, right? With Benson Henson. Yeah, I think that's where I got my MMA Lab before. You yeah. Know, when, yeah. One later. yeah. So, look, he, let's look at his last few fights now. He beat Cody Bollinger. Do you remember Cody Bollinger in Tough? Cody, yeah. I can't remember. Yeah, I do remember his name, though. I think I he missed weight. Like. He missed weight. And then he had to, like, get off. But, yeah, it could be. Yeah. Uh, Noad, Noad Laha. You remember Noad Laha, the Israeli? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was in UFC. Um, yeah, and then uh, Georgi Karakanian. Yeah, so he for He used to be in WSOF. Georgi okay, Karakanian. that's why I can't remember. Yeah, and Andy Main. Andy Main was uh, he was quite a big fighter in Japan, Shuto. He changed mm. to Josh Barnett's team. All right. He changed to Josh Barnett's team. So, yeah, he got TKO'd by um, Henry Corrales. And then now Henry Corrales has KO'd Aaron Pico. So, yeah, I, I, I honestly think, I honestly think uh, they sh- him and Patricky should fight. Yeah, five wins in a row, so deserves his title. I think, so, yeah, I think you should give him a title shot. We want a fresh new matchup. I don't see why uh, why not. It seems to be a fun fight. What do you think? Yeah, similar. Five win, five winning streak. He wants the title shot. I think he should get it because he only had 12 days notice before. Um, he deserves the title shot. <laughs> do you remember Do you remember Aaron Fico's first fight? <laughs> oh, shot. yeah. And the shot, like, he's the future, he's the best. And then, he, boom, gets choked out. Oh, like, no, no, man. That's uh, so you know, when I watched it, I started laughing, man. I was like, oh, shit. I, and I shouldn't be laughing. because, yeah. <laughs> But the way they were hyping him up, I had a feeling, I was like, this guy's going to lose, man. They, they, it's like, it's like you know, like... A I know, plus the other guy had experience. Yeah, no, but it's like the, the guy was like, he had nine wins and two losses or something. Yeah. yeah and that was his first fight, I was like... They're killing this guy, man. He's, just, he's fighting Henry Corrales. He's only yeah, had five fights. Yeah, why is he fighting 16-3 and three guy? I don't understand. I uh, I heard Scott Crawford goes, he doesn't want to fight. Like, all the other guys, they don't want to fight him. Oh. And he, oh, he didn't want to fight them as well. He wanted, like, somebody, like, high level. Well, he learned his lesson now. Yeah, but I don't I don't understand. Like, I get... They, you know, they should follow a bit more of a, like you said before, a boxing model because this is getting out of hand. You find someone who's way out of your experience. Like like Carl Robinson. Uh, do you remember last week, Carl Robinson, when he fought Glover? What, yeah. Why is why is Carl Robinson fighting Glover Teixeira? He's only had seven fights. Like, give the guy a fucking break. You know what I mean? Like, let him build up. Like, you're ruining him. Like, you're ruining fires, up-and-coming fires. Like, he's yeah. a fresh fighter, right? And you're ruining him. Was it because of short notice or was that... It wasn't actually, was it? Like, a planned fight? Oh. Might have, maybe, maybe it was short notice. Because I, I don't it was... think it was a planned fight. Because okay, but, okay, fair enough. Then if it wasn't, but I'm just saying, like, you know, they need to stop doing that. Because you look at Aaron Pico on loads of potential, and he just wasn't ready, man. He did good though. He need knocked him out, but he just needs that more experience. Yeah, he does. Sure, we'll ex- get... yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, we'll get on to the. Cause we're Bader. repeating the same point now. Then we get yeah. on to Ryan Bader <laughs> versus Fedor Emelianenko. They the are title. 
They are virtually identical now. <laughs> uh, we look at the record now. Record 38 and 5 for Fedor and 26 and 5 for Ryan Bader. Very good records. And uh, Yeah, very good. Uh, they're both similar heights, a bit one or two inch off. Uh, six for two, Ryan Bader apparently, and six for Fedor. And the weight cl- weights are not far apart as well, just about ten pounds. Okay, you know Fedor. Yeah. Like, like I, I used to always think, yeah, why is this? How is this guy a heavyweight, right? He doesn't look that big in it. He doesn't look that big, like when I when I watch him on TV. And then when I went to meet him, uh, I think it's on my Insta. I went to meet him, right? The guy's back is he is like massive, man. Like he's thick. Like, you know, Fedor, like, if you look at him, like, physically, like, you could see he's a heavyweight. Like, okay, this guy's a heavyweight. Like, you don't notice it in person until you actually see the guy. No, you don't notice it on TV, you mean? Yeah, that's what I mean. You, yeah, you, you notice see it him person, in yeah. person, yeah. So, uh, that was actually, uh, it, was good. it was so weird. He had, like, an aura around him. Like, you know, I couldn't even speak on that. Yeah. I was, like, unsure what to say. It's like he had, uh, if, you know, whoever watches One Piece, it's like he had Emperor's Hockey and, like, yeah. he, had, like <laughs> he had, like, a certain hockey to him. Like, you're like, oh, shit. Like, if you look there, you get knocked out. <laughs> yeah, yeah so. I'd like to mention, as well, this fight wasn't for one belt. It was two belts. Yeah, World yeah, Heavyweight yeah. Championship and the Heavyweight Grand Prix belt. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, yeah, it was the final, right? Yeah. Yeah, uh, Fedor looked good in his last three fights. Well, Frank Mir fight was 50 50, yeah, and yeah, they both went to knock. And Fedor, uh, he beat up the shit out of Sonny. So. Yeah, but before that, he did get beat by Mitrion. So. But that was close. They both got dropped. Close, yeah. And what do you think of the random? So, oh, he looks. Uh, was he, is it he just me, or is it my inexperience? But he looked flat footed. Who? Fedor. He's just like that. Fedor, like that. Yeah. A bit like that. He was a bit more. You know, he is. He's for some reason he's super fast though. Now, you know Fedor, he's like a cat. Like, yeah. well, obviously our ages now is catching up. And I think yeah, that, this time he's not a cat, man. He uh, yeah, you know speed. Speed yeah. like goes away later time yeah. when you're older. So Bedo Bedo just caught him with the left hook, right? Yeah, he caught him left hook. Oh, man. I was like, how quick was that? Was that like twenty seconds? Yeah, it was a short fight. No, ten seconds. Short. Yeah, short, super short though. Five seconds, yeah. Um, it just felt like 10 seconds, I don't know why, but 35 seconds, he just got caught with a left hook and then got finished, TKO'd. I was just yeah. like, oh, man. I want to see a bit more. <laughs> Bader. Yeah, Ryan, Ryan Bader said that he didn't want to finish him, you know, with a big right when he went to yeah. the ground. He yeah. goes, he didn't want to do it, but the referee didn't stop it, so he had to. Finish. Yeah, he had to, man. So, he, yeah, he hit him with a big right and the hammer fisted him, I think. Yeah, yeah. Plus, you know, a guy like Fedor, you don't want to give him a second chance. Because yeah. he might knock you out, you know what I mean? So, um, he did good there. Bader's been looking really good. Like, he's on a streak, right? He's beaten yeah. quite a lot of fighters now. Since yeah, Beltor. So when he I came still, in, I, he beat I Phil Davis. I still think that fight was a bit controversial, though. Him and Phil Davis. Yeah, he, he beat Phil Davis. That fight. So, um, was that his the, debut? No. Oh, okay, well, actually, yeah, it was his debut, actually. Yeah, for a title. Yeah, yeah. He yeah. was uh, on the so, Sunny vs. Silver one day. Yeah, and he's the first dual champ in Bellator history now. Champ, champ. He's got champ, champ status now. Yeah. <laughs> first champ, champ. Do, okay, look there. Phil Davis, Linton Vassell, Mo, uh, King Mo, Matt Mitrione, and Fedor now. What a yeah. resume. Yeah. His build, resume is being built, man. Like, he's 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 got a very good record. Like, he's 27-5 and five now. Mm. This guy's going to be, you know, he's done very well. Like, I, he couldn't. Do you think who do you think you should fight next now? Because he's got two belts. Do you think you should go back to light heavyweight and defend, and then go back heavyweight? Yeah, he, he has to defend. I, I, I think, think he, I think he's bad at heavyweight. Cause, I, don't, uh, yeah, he I to, think he should defend because you don't want to be like you know how McGregor basically just vacate your. Uh, yeah. It doesn't look good. Yeah, but I think he should vacate like heavyweight because honestly, you know, at heavyweight, he just looks too fast for everyone. And uh, he's got very good power as well. It looks like he can knock people out as well. At that weight, he doesn't need to cut. Um, he's good. At, he looks ripped at 235. Basically. Yeah, and um, and uh, Matt Mitrione, he dealt with him so quick. I mean, not quick, but like he just dealt yeah. with him, negated yeah. all of it. Such is a whole game now. Yeah. Uh, King Moe knocked him out in 15 seconds. So, so I think he should. Um, I think he should stay at heavyweight. 
He, made he, can, he can make cool light heavyweight, so why not? Yeah, I know, but it's just extra effort for him. If if you're looking at, he's older now. Yeah. Uh, he should just stick a heavyweight, I think. Fun matchups, new matchups for him. He's beaten, he's literally beaten most of the division in um, light heavyweight. The main guys, he beat Phil Davis, Linton Vassal, and King Mo. They're like the main guys at light heavyweight, other yeah. than Liam McGeary. Other than Liam McGeary, he's beaten like nearly everyone in that division. Heavyweight, he's got Sergey Karatanov, he's got Roy Nelson. There's quite still a few more matchups he's got. In that yeah. division, so um, yeah, I think uh, I think a very good, very good win for him. He's beaten a legend. Like what, what people don't remember is Fedor was considered a goat at one point. Yeah. So do you do you remember when Ryan Vader lost to Tito Ortiz? Yeah, I know, man. Remember when he got uh, a guillotine? No, I'm not saying Tito was not a bad fight, but that was when Tito was like later in his career and he was on a losing streak, I think. And then Tito choked him out. That was a big win. Right, that how long ago was that? I remember watching that. Not that long. That was long, 2011. Oh, shit, that was long. <laughs> but do you remember Bader was like an up-and-coming guy back then? Yeah, I think that's why. Yeah, yeah. And then he got choked out. Yeah, he, he, I remember that and I thought it wasn't that long ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's weird. Time was so quick. With, um, I think, yeah, he's beaten quite He's beaten quite a few guys, man. I think, um, what's his name? Tito Ortiz actually wants to fight Ryan Bader. Why you want to? They want to. I think so because I was talking to Akil and he said that um, you're he's saying something to... about Tito Ortiz, yeah, wanting uh, to buy talk... You were talking to Pepsi, okay? Um, yeah, shout out to Pepsi, you know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um... Well, so I think that that you know that covers the you know oh, main card of Belto 214. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is the end of the episode, guys. Uh, we'd like to thank, you know, all the listeners sticking with us. You know, it's nine episodes now. Hopefully, tenth one will be good. Yeah, um, we got. Uh, you know what's you know what's crazy? Like, um, I'm looking at our, uh, our SoundCloud stats, and we've got a lot of US listeners. So shout out to the people in the US. They're actually giving yeah. us more support than people in the UK, which is actually sad. But yeah, and uh, we actually got one or two listeners from Germany. I think I saw one from Germany. No, but I think the UK listeners are watching on YouTube. That's what it is. Like Maybe. on SoundCloud, they're not listening on SoundCloud. Yes. So, uh, yeah, it's no hate for no one. No hate for no one. But sh- shout out to US, yeah, showing the love. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, follow us on uh, on Instagram, MMA Diagnosis, Facebook, all the all our handles, right? MMA Diagnosis. Yeah. Yeah, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and you can follow us on our personal ones as well. So uh, it'll be in the bio in our page. So, all right, peace out, guys. Uh, peace out. See you next time.